What's up everybody in the Splinterverse? It is Luke Jack here again to talk about Web3 game this time. Again, we're going with the Splinterlands video, so hopefully we can cause as much drama as last time and just rustle some feathers. Nah, 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 just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, guys. I love y'all. No more drama. Just, just wanted to throw out my thoughts here on the proposal, which is the adjust rewards based on card level. So, you know, this proposal doesn't make me as mad as last time. You know, I'm not really that frustrated. So that's good. That's good. Hopefully we'll be able to talk with a clear mind here and have some fun. But basically, if you don't know what it is, you probably already all know what it is because we're a few days into the proposal. They already put it out. A lot of feedback has already gone out. Uh, let me move myself to the side so that you can see it a little bit better. Reward chairs are going to be re-raced based on the level of cards. So let's say, for instance, you're playing in gold and you only have a level one legendary like me. I only have a level one Kron, level one Phantom of the Abyss from some of those untamed ones. You're going to make less R shares, meaning you're going to get less SPS per win, less chest. And this is to encourage players, according to the team, to own and rent higher level cards, okay? Initially, they said the reason is collection power was introduced so that you would be capped and you couldn't be someone that's owning a silver deck and playing up in diamond, for instance. Obviously, that is already going on because the modern power requirements aren't that crazy, especially if you're factoring in owning guild cards and some of the older untamed or whatever cards. It's not that hard to get the collection power you need to push up. And so, you know, you can argue this is maybe for some bots that are getting more rewards than you can. And maybe some players who are just renting a bunch of level one cards, trying to fill in the rest to push into diamond, champion, whatever. Uh, you're probably not pushing into champion. If you are with level one cards, please tell me how you're doing that because that sounds incredible. And... They also said in the town hall, which I didn't watch, but uh, this is just the recap summary on their peaked posts. One of the things that I can't tell if Neil said this or the team said this, but essentially um, main problem they said lies in the ranking system rather than the earning system and modifying the ranking system takes a ton more effort. And this time uh, this proposal will act like a temporary bandaid, which I, I definitely am glad that they said that because when I saw this proposal, I'm like, that's not really addressing the root cause, and I think that is more of a banding. So I'm glad at least that they're admitting that, and I'm fine with this proposal. I voted yes, and we'll talk more about that if we are looking at it as a temporary band-aid, and we're not looking at it as a really, you know, a long-term solution. Really, yes, this is going to affect some players, and it is going to be a bummer. As I said, like for me, I'm playing in silver, but at the end of the season... I jump into gold when I've already entered all the tournaments I can in bronze and silver to get some of those gold chests. And I do have some cards that are legendary level one, or you can even look at some of the untamed cards, uh, such as like, uh, I don't know if I, I might be renting them out. I don't even own them right now on this account, but like living lava. Okay. It's an expensive card, right? So if you look for a level one, it's 363. If you're, you know, like, okay. I can use this shield ability and it's going to, you know, fit most situations where if I level it up to like a level three or a level four, I'm not really getting more value out of that, which I would need in gold, uh, a gold level five living lava. Okay. I'm just not going to be able to afford that. That's going to be crazy expensive. And so, yes, it's going to cause problems for when we still have untamed in the modern league. Eventually when a rebellion comes out next year, hopefully we won't have that big of a problem but it's definitely going to be a problem for me and other players with i think mostly the untamed deck so what are my thoughts i just wrote them out a high-tech google doc here called splinter lands thoughts okay so i'm fine with the, the solution for now but i want to talk about i think this is a good opportunity to talk about what are those root issues that i see create some discussion within the community because eventually eventually we got to stop going for these band-aid solutions and we need to talk about the root issues. So even though I don't think the team's going to be able to solve those root issues right now, it's at least let's get them out there. Let's clear the air. Let's understand some of those root issues. I have some, maybe you have some as well, throw them in the comments so that we can start talking about what do we do long term? So for me, as I've thought about this issue, a couple of root issues. One rating system is so inflationary. And I think this is what they mean when the, the rating system is kind of broken. Pretty much, even if you get a 50% win rate, 
your your ranking is going to go up and up and up because over time people are getting higher ratings due to win rate bonuses or sorry win streaks stuff like that so everyone's is climbing and then as everyone is climbing even if, even if you're not doing well you're just still going to inflate because you're going to be playing against players who have more rating than you which are going to boost your ratings up because you don't lose as much when you're playing against a higher level player and you win more when you win so it's pretty inflationary now i know a lot of players like i, I watched critmancer's video here uh, tales of the Tales from the Cryptmancer, talking about how big of a struggle it is Diamond to Champion. I'm not in that area, so go watch his video. Uh, I think that's a whole different issue, uh, but I think the rating system definitely needs a rework. But as I said, that is probably going to take a lot of time. As I said in my fix, uh, that's going to take a lot of testing. And so, yeah, I can understand. Let's put a bandaid on that for now. But I think there are other solutions that we could think about maybe before even reworking the entire rating system of the game. One problem I see, this has frustrated me for a while, and I've talked about this many times, we're pretty much rewarding people and bots for a 50% win rate. You don't have to be good at the game, you don't have to have level cards, because as long as you have a decent enough win rate, you can be a bot that sucks and still win 50% of the time, and you're going to get eventually up to the top of silver or up to the top of gold because over the season, your rating is inflating. So... Really, a lot of the people are and bots are earning so much more because we have so much money going into just winning a ranked game. And it doesn't really matter if you win 50% or 55% win rate, which I've talked about in tournaments. I think we should start rewarding tournaments way more. And I would, you know, <laughs> none of this is never going to happen because people would freak out. I would just completely remove SPS rewards from the rank system and put them in tournaments. You can still earn cards and packs and stuff in chess. But because to me in tournaments, that is that is win to earn. That means competition. That means you have to have skill and be good at the game to earn. Rather than just coming into ranked play, it doesn't really matter how much you win. You're eventually going to get the rating that you want anyways. So in tournament, I can show you here in my wild tournament, right? I even rented for this tournament. I still got clapped and I went six and five. So barely better than a 50% win rate. Guess what? I don't make it to day two because I don't make it to day two. I'm stuck here with whatever that was 84. So I, I stopped at 19 SPS versus if I made it to day two, I could have gotten 68, maybe 173, et cetera, et cetera. You understand the concept that you have to have a better than a 50% win rate. If you want the best rewards, tournaments encourage really a 70 to 80% win rate and to be at the top, usually a 90 plus percent win rate, okay? So you're actually rewarding players that have skill or you know you can argue on some of the tournaments like that wild tournament, a lot of people have really expensive decks. So, okay, we can talk about that. But I, I just don't like that the ranked system doesn't really le lend itself to caring about win rate. So we don't have to do zero SPS rewards. I know that's not realistic, but can we shift things around to make it a little bit more competitive? That is a root issue to me. The third one is we are really incentivizing now, especially, especially when the reward changes went through with the last proposal uh, or a couple of proposals ago, where now it's based on percentage per league of SPS rewards. So champion is crazy amount of rewards. Diamond went up a little bit. I think gold, silver, and bronze all trended down uh, a little bit depending on each league. So we're, we're really saying, guys, if you want to get rewarded in this game, move up to higher leagues beyond what your deck is really meant to do. Now, when I talked to Rogue about this, one of the things I love, he said, what I've done is stay in my lane, right? So I'm going to max out for Modern League Bronze. Well, maybe not untamed, but, you know, get ready for having a bronze leveled deck between Chaos Legion and Rebellion eventually for Modern League. And then once I have the bronze figured out, let's move into silver, max that out. Now, once I move into silver, then we move to gold. So it's like staying in your lane until you're really maxed out and ready to progress to that next one. And that's where I've actually found the beauty in this game. I've talked about this before, but the beauty in this game is not, oh, I, I rented one or two decks and I was able to push into diamond. Because really, I, to me, that takes away the fun of the game. That makes it, oh, I rented two decks, so I'm really just crossing my fingers that I get the exact rule set, deck, and mana cap for those cards that I have rented. It's not even about skill. I just, do I get the luck of getting the right rule set that I need for the two rental decks? Versus, if I have a max level silver deck versus a max level silver deck, silver deck, then it's actually competition. Then I'm, we're all thinking about, okay, we have to have puzzle 
what is, we all have the same cards or relatively the same cards. How do we work this rule set? How do we work this mana cap? How do we work which decks are available to put out the best team? And that's where the fun, the skill of the game, the beauty of this game really comes into me. And so the problem is we're incentivizing rewards, higher, 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 higher leagues, but we're going to nerf the ways that you do it because we don't want you to stay, uh, to move beyond your lane. So it's really conflicting where it's like, yes, in a silver deck, I'm going to make way more in the bottom of gold or the bottom of diamond than at literally whatever I am right now, like number 50 in silver, right? 28. Oh, I'm 28. Nice. Okay. So even if you look at these leaderboard rewards, right? Top one in silver, you're getting 40,000 DC, which is what? 20 bucks or like 10 chaos legion packs, right? Even less for the first second for third. So unless you're top three, you're getting like two and a half chaos legion packs. Or if you're not top 10, you're getting essentially one chaos legion pack worth of DEC. If you move into gold, even at the bottom or mid tier of gold from silver, you're going to earn more chaos legion packs, more SPS in your chest, all those things. If you move even to the bottom of diamond, right? You're going to get all of those things. So rather than me stay in silver and try to compete for these leaderboard rewards, what I'm going to do because the reward system is encouraging me to do that is with eight days left, I have to now take my silver deck and I have to play in gold, which I don't want to do because again, it takes away the fun of the game. Now I'm just hoping to face other silver players in gold instead of really competing with a max level gold deck in modern. So me, it's saying get out of your lane because the rewards are so much more worth it. But then the fun of the game, the incentive, the idea of staying in your lane, the whole idea of not going beyond too far of your deck into the next level, really the game encourages you to do so and then is now giving us a band-aid to say, don't do that. Oh, well, which one is it? Do you want me to climb to higher leagues or do you not want me to, right? So <laughs> that's where the confliction comes into me. So what I would like to see is give us a reason I think personally, whatever percentage it is, is the top, let's say top 10% of silver should have an incentive to earn more than being the bottom, whatever, 20% of gold. I should be incentivized to stay in my lane, really push to the top of silver versus having to climb up into gold and be the bottom 20%, get blasted in gold and have no fun. Or top 10%, you know, I should, I get more rewards in the top, you know, whatever, 15% of silver versus being in the bottom 2%, whatever percent, <laughs> wherever it is, of diamond. But right now, I could be at the very, very bottom of diamond 2800 rating, and I could tell you I'd make way more than being in the top 1%, even being on the leaderboard, number one. I think the bottom 2% of diamond is still going to make more than Shunapoon. In number one of silver and I don't think that is the way we should be incentivizing so for an idea I, I mentioned this on one of the podcasts earlier one thing that I think would be really cool and maybe this this idea needs to be worked and you know thought about by the community and make it better but one thing I think would be cool is for instance make a top percent of each league that by the end of the season you get to go into a ghost card tournament and have a really good incentive reward, whatever it is, SPS or extra chess or something like that. More it has to be more than you know twenty or you know uh, ten chaos legion packs worth. That way, you still have incentive to own cards because you have to get let's say into the top ten percent of silver, or whatever the the percentage mark off that we want it to be. But then you are still incentivized that oh. Even if I don't have literally every untamed card like some of these top silver level players do, I know I'm going to get into that ghost card tournament where I have the potential. So you're still maybe only rewarding the like top 10, 20 players of silver really heavily, but you're doing it in a way that, you know, instead of just 10 people having the chance at the top leaderboard, you have 10% chance for the top silver players. Same thing in gold, same thing in diamond. That way, oh, I'm incentive to stay in my lane and I have an actual shot at earning something that's meaningful versus just saying I'm going to limp into gold and diamond with my silver deck because that's what I have to do to, if I really want to earn rewards. That would be a lot more fun. That would be something a lot more competitive. And again, the community is going to have to work that idea. 
shift things around. I don't know what exact percentages or how to make that work or what exactly to reward them with. But if you do that, I think a lot more players will be willing to stick into silver, looking to make that you know top 10%, top 20% leaderboard, get into that ghost card tournament, and then win number one or have a shot at number one to earn you know whatever you know 20 packs and you know a couple hundred SPS or something crazy like that. So if you're shifting rewards just from winning a match at the bottom of diamond to hey. The, the thing that's way more meaningful is being one of the top players in silver. Then you're going to have players who actually are playing in the level that they deserve and have a deck for. So that's what I mean by let's incentivize playing in your lane versus incentivizing only jumping up league and league and league and then having to say, hey, let's nerf the ways that people are doing that incorrectly. That's what I'm saying. Let's think of ways to incentivize staying in your lane and encourage players to do that rather than encourage players to go up and then slap their hand and say, no, you're doing it the wrong way. Okay. So again, I'm voting yes, just cause like, okay, whatever, let's get this band bandaid fix out there. And then let's talk about the root problems. And I think one of the problems, one of the reasons I've been frustrated and you could see it in some of my last videos, you know, whatever that was two weeks ago when I caused all that drama, it's because every time you make a change, it is going to have an emotional, stressful impact potentially on players. Even if they are good changes, even if they make the economy healthier or whatever, let me just let me just talk about the changes that I've experienced in this game for the last whatever 13, 14 months I've been playing this game. And again, these I'm not saying these changes are good or bad. I'm just saying they have a side effect to not only how you play the game, but a potential frustration or stress point for players. So, for instance, you had DC to SPS rewards, and then you have SPS rewards being instant staked. What is the side effect? Even if that's healthier, good for the game and the economy, the side effect is it's much harder to convert progression into the game. When I came into the game and I was earning DC, I had a chance to just instantly go buy cards or rent cards, and I could continually feel like I'm getting stronger and stronger. Number three, you have one to two day rentals. What does that mean? Even if that means, you know, less bots and people are exploiting and doing, you know, one day rental stuff, it means more expensive for tournaments because you used to be able to just rent the cards for one day, which would give you both days of the tournament. Same thing with guild brawls, same thing with ECR draining strats where you could come in for, and rent cards for one day, drain it to 50% and then wait two days to get up to hundred percent. Again, I'm not saying that's a bad change. I'm saying it has a side effect to how people and I were playing the game. Then you have the reward league changes being based on percentage per league, which means less lower league rewards and massive rewards and champion. Again, it's probably good for the game and the economy, but again, another point of frustration potentially. Then we have three max level promo cards, which means it's way more expensive to buy a max level deck for modern bronze, silver, and gold than it should be. Because now I have to buy a max level Waka, Vega, and Rooney which I don't need a max level because I'm trying to stay in my lane of silver. So why would I need to spend a grand or two grand on these max level cards when I should in reality be able to buy individual ones and only get it to the level that I need to. Again, I know that some of those were for specific promo promotion marketing things and made it a little bit hard to do individual ones, but I'm just saying that has a negative side effect. Modern league added. Not again, not a bad change. But again, it comes with the stress of, okay, I owned wild cards. They're not in the modern league. What do I do with those cards? Do I sell them? Do I rent them? And some of that can be fun to figure out what to do with your wild cards. But again, can be difficult. Uh, mostly, I think modern league was a positive. And I, I, I think it'll be even more positive, honestly, when Untamed gets out of the system. And it's just a, a, a supply where it actually fits the community right now. Uh, changes to our shares. I couldn't really think of any negative side effects. Maybe you can. I'm, I'm pretty happy with our shares. I think it's a lot more fun. Uh, starter cards now having penalties where you're not earning with those or it's a penalty to how much our shares you get, which means now you have to buy starter cards or avoid using them, especially because some of those untamed ones, as we said before, pretty dang expensive. And then change number nine. Now, if this proposal goes through, non-level cards will lose some rewards, which means now we have to unditch, uh, ditch most of our untamed cards or spend money to get them leveled up. Like a lot of money, as I just showed with the example of even getting to a level two Kron or a level five living lava, like those cards are incredibly expensive. So again, maybe there's even more changes. I don't know. I, th I thought of nine. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you guys could add to the list. Those changes can be good, but that's what I'm saying. Like 
it was why part of the reason why I'm so frustrated or was, fr- I'm not as frustrated anymore. Well, it's just like every change that comes in, boom, 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 over time, time again. It does build up over time. And you're like, are these changes ever going to stop coming? Like, I'm just tired of having to continually change my strategy. And so, yes, I'm voting yes. But I think it's the time where we need to say, okay, let's stop looking at the Band-Aid solutions. Let's look at those long-term solutions. Honestly, at this point, I know people would, would go crazy. This would tank the game. Not going to happen. But I honestly would rather just say, let's let's time out rewards for like two months. Let's just say no more SPS rewards. Time out and figure out the root causes. I know that's not realistic, but I'm at this point where I, I would rather just have us fix those long-term solutions <laughs> and not even get rewarded right now. Like I, I would just want to, re- I just really want to focus on those long-term solutions. So that's, that's my thoughts. That's my feelings. You could disagree, whatever, but those are the types of things, even if it's not the idea of making the leaderboard ghost card tournament, even if it's not that, I think until we can figure out the rating system and do a whole rework on the rating system, my vote is how do we actually incentivize staying in the league that you're supposed to be in based on the card levels you have? Let's encourage that with rewards, with meaningful rewards, even if it's for a small percent of players. At least it gives us a reason to stay in our lane rather than, again, moving from silver to diamond. I hope that makes sense. Those are my thoughts. I'm going to end it here. We already had 20 minutes. Woo! A lot of talking, a lot of talking. I like it, though. I like it. <laughs> I still like this game. I'm still playing it. Still like you guys. So let me know your thoughts. Maybe you uh, disagree completely. Maybe you agree. I don't know. Krills, where you at? Respond in the comments. I'll read some for now. I'm going to head out. Maybe we'll get some gameplay or streaming on later this week. And I did move my Splinterlands TV time to 8 p.m. on Tuesdays for Pacific Standard Time. Meaning if you're in Europe or the East Coast, you're probably not going to be able to tune in as much. Uh, But maybe some of you guys back in the Philippines and stuff will show up again. So uh, much love to you all. Peace out. Have a great day, guys. And I'll see you next time. Peace.